Council and Successor Agency uh, to order. Can we start a roll call, please? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. Try into the microphone. You are unmuted. Council Member Bertrand. Here. Council Member Batorf. Here. Council Member Story. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. Mayor Peterson. Here. Thank you. Uh, please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, do we have any additional materials for tonight's meeting? Yes, there were two emails regarding item 6A. Great, thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Staff has no changes. Great, thank you. Um, we're gonna go to city council, successor agency, city uh, staff comments. Let's start with staff. Does staff have any comments? Uh, I think it might be a good idea for us to kind of go through a little bit of the, for the public about how to participate. Maybe you are right, let me start with that. Great, <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, in accordance with the current shelter in place order from Santa Cruz County Health Service and Executive Order N2920 from the Executive Department of the State of California, this council meeting is not physically open to the public. As you can see, limited staff is physically present in council chambers and all the council is participating remotely via video call. Members of the council can raise their hand in Zoom to indicate that they would like to speak. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on the Saturday following the first broadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city's website and with the Zoom meeting link also available on our website. Tonight's technician is Benjamin Thompson. Thank you again, Benjamin, as always. Despite being physically close to the public, participation is still possible. Public comment can be emailed or called into council. To email comments, please identify the item you wish to comment on in your email subject line. Emailed comments will be accepted starting now, up until I announce that public comment for that item is closed. Each emailed comment will be read aloud for up to three minutes or displayed on the screen. To call in comments, before the item you wish to comment on, call the phone number displayed. Enter meeting ID 821-0902-6541. Press the hash or pound key when prompted for a participant ID. To raise your hand to make a comment, press star six on your phone Wait to hear that you are unmuted and then make your comment. You will have up to three minutes to speak. If you are watching the meeting via Zoom, you can use the participant option to raise your hand and make a comment when unmuted by our moderator. So if you uh, scroll to the bottom of your Zoom meeting, uh, hover near the bottom, you'll see a tab that, or a button that says participants. If you click that, it will show you the participants of the meeting and you should have the option to raise hand at the bottom of the participants bar. Emails and calls received outside of the comment period outlined will not be included in the record. All right. Now we can move on uh, to city council and staff comments. Any comments from staff or any additional uh, information about tonight participating in tonight's meeting that I may have missed? I think you have it pretty well covered and I don't think we have any additional comments this evening. Great. Let's go to uh, City Council for comments then. Uh, Council Member Story, any comments? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor uh, Peterson. Um, I just had a request. Um, I had a little difficulty getting in this evening and um, I would like to ask that when we get our email notices that it includes the ID number instead of just the link 
uh, to the to the meeting site um, in addition to the password. Um, thank you. Great, thank you. Vice Mayor Brooks, any comments? No, I have none. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Bottor? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Bertrand? Yeah, I have a few comments. Um, uh, reading emails from people in the village and such, there's a lot of interest in the committee that's um, working, I guess, with you, Kristen, but also how Rich Hill is um, involved in that and, um, you know, what the actions items are, the meeting schedules, and all that. There's a lot of interest. So are we going to uh, talk about it? It's not agendized, but I think it would be good for staff to, you know, give us a rundown of what that is. Sure. So that isn't on the agenda at this point. Um, I, I'm a little uncomfortable going too far off off the agenda with an explanation and discussion of that at this time. Can, can we do that at the next council meeting when we talk about the COVID update? Yeah, that would be good because there is a lot of interest. Obviously, um, one email in particular talked about how many businesses are closing. I mean, so. There's a lot of need for this committee, and uh, Rich Hill is going to be the sort of the intermediary. So I think his role is critical, and the public needs to understand how this committee is going to work. Sure. Thank you. I, I can make sure to do a briefing when we do our COVID briefing at the next council meeting. To and I'll invite Rich, and he can talk about more what what he's been doing. Great. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Great. Thank you. Um, and I just have a brief comment. I wanted to acknowledge. Um, that the county has declared today uh, Ben Kelly uh, Day. And for those of you who don't know, Ben Kelly was the young man who tragically passed away a couple weeks ago. And he worked very closely with our BIA. He was uh, the communications manager and ran their social media and uh, was, was uh, highly critical, uh, very important in, in ensuring that they got the word out there. And so I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge um, ben Kelly, and that today is Ben Kelly Day in Santa Cruz County. We're going to move forward now with the consent calendar, item five. All items listed in this consent calendar will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. And there's no separate discussion on these items unless any of the council members or member of the public would like to request any of these items pulled for separate consideration. There's only one item on consent calendar tonight. Uh, would any of the council members like to pull it for a separate consideration? Seeing and hearing none, uh, we'll go to our city manager. Were there any public comments about pulling any of the consent items for, for separate consideration? We have no public comments received by email. Okay, and uh, Mr. Moderator, are there any uh, verbal public comments uh, regarding pulling any of these items off consent calendar? I don't see any hands raised. Great, thank you. With that, we will uh, entertain, um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, we did public comment. Motion to adopt. A little bit different. Yeah, motion to adopt consent calendar. There we go. And was that a second I heard from Council Member Bertrand? That was. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, can we get a roll call vote, please? Council Member Bertrand? Council Member Bertrand? Aye. Council Member Botorf? Aye. Council Member Story? Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks? Aye. And Mayor Peterson? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Carried unanimously. Uh, we're going to move on to item six general government and public hearings. Uh, the reason we're all here tonight a presentation of the proposed 2020-2021 fiscal year budget for the City of Capitola General Fund and Capitola Successor Agency. I will hand it over to staff for a staff report. Sure. So I'll do a little bit of an introduction and then turn it over to our finance director, Jim Malberg. And you know, I think we this is the second in our series of budget updates, um, budget hearings. Um, and a lot of these points I think I made the last time around, but just to reiterate, you know, the, the scope of the challenge that the city is facing and how how significant the pandemic has impacted the city of Capitol is from a financial perspective. Obviously, there's uh, incredible um, community impacts, a lot of community fear around the health impacts, 
incredible impacts on our local business and obviously then the budgetary impacts on the city of Capitola. And for, for those of you who aren't aware, you know, the, the, the city went through what at the time people said was a once in a lifetime downturn in the 2008 Great Recession. And, you know, the scale of what we're looking at, I think, in this year's budget is is on the order of magnitude of about twice uh, what we saw in 2008. So if that helps people put it in perspective for how big those challenges were for local government, um, this is really, you know, probably twice the challenge that that was. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jim, and he's prepared an update for you, uh, sort of summarizing where we've come since the last meeting, and then following up on a couple of the different items that the council asked about, and then close out, we have um, a summary that Steve Jesberg, our public works director, will do to talk, a stat talk about a status report on the capital improvement program. So with that, Jim. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully I can do this correctly. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so that looks like it's up on the screen. Um, so by way of just a quick summary, um, as Jamie just mentioned, the COVID-19, uh, the economy has been impacted pretty heavily by the COVID-19 pandemic, significantly worse than the Great Recession that we saw a little over a decade ago. Um, we anticipate a $4 million revenue shortfall from our prior estimates for fiscal year 2021. And if you recall, we had about a half million dollar gap that we were gonna to have to close anyway. So we were faced with about a four and a half million dollar budget gap from our original projections for this year. Uh, the budget that you're gonna to see tonight has all expenditures have been eliminated or reduced as much as possible down to basically what's just legally required or absolutely necessary to maintain city services. Jim, could you go into just, there you go, thank you. It's swap. There we go. Is that better? Perfect. Um, so, uh, so again, expenditures have been either eliminated or reduced as much as possible to what's legally required or kind of the basic necessity is just to maintain city services. Um, and as far as from staffing, all vacant positions have been frozen at this point. So proposed budget revisions since the um, First hearing that we had a couple of weeks ago, based on council direction, uh, we have a true up of Measure F of about 300,000. We've released the $300,000 that was designated for the Employee Down Payment Assistance Program, and those two um, actions allowed us to eliminate the transfer from the contingency reserve that was um, a, to cover the negative 400 and almost $26,000 fund balance that we were looking at. For fiscal year 2021, the changes um, we're showing uh, authorized positions versus budgeted positions, and that's just to demonstrate that the frozen positions aren't being eliminated. They're simply just not being budgeted for fiscal year 2021. Um, I went through our personnel spreadsheet and did some cleanup, was able to reduce costs just by through cleaning stuff up, up about a little over 1% or $120,000 um, of reduced cost for personnel. Uh, the uh, county health officer released uh, some updated guidelines for running summer programs, so we revised some revenue and expenditures in the junior guard and camp programs. In aggregate, it was an uh, increase of about $30,000 in revenues and $8,900 in, on the expenditure side. We also reduced our contract services for janitorial services in, at recreation by $6,000. Um, there's Clean up for contract services. I had entered a number incorrectly on one of the police department uh, contracts, so we got that cleaned up. That was 482 bucks. And we've added the, uh, from the first round, we've added the special revenue funds, multi-year assets and obligations, and the successor agency. And the net effect of those changes for fiscal year 2021 improved our position by about 157,000. So if you recall, at the last budget hearing, we were negative around 323. Now we're negative around 165, oh, which is on this slide. So our estimated impact on the fund balance at June 30 is just under 1.9 million. That's down to 300,000, and I'll show that on another slide for the um, true up of Measure F. Our estimated ending fund balance is now a positive 174 rather than a negative 425. 
And this budget as being presented tonight, our expenditures are still 165, almost $166,000 higher than um, our revenues. But we now have fund balance to cover that to at least have a positive fund balance ending in fiscal year 2021. As a reminder for the reserves are fully funded, uh, contingency sitting just a little bit over 2 million, emergency reserve just under 1.4. And I just received the April statement on our PERS contingency trust, and it's up to just under or a little over 889,000. So that was, I think I was showing 850 or 860 at the last meeting. So we've recovered probably about half of the law, investment losses on the uh, PERS trust. So that's good news there. And then this is just the general fund summary for the revenues and expenditures. The circled areas are showing what was on the previous slide. So on the expenditures, if you look kind of the top of the big circle under other finance uses, you'll see that that's been reduced by 300,000. That's the true up of measure F. And then that takes it took us to a one, uh, negative 125 fund balance. And then by releasing the employee down payment assistance, the $300,000 allocated there or programmed there, that brought us to a positive fund balance for 1920 to end this year at 174. 174,000, and then in the fiscal year 2021, you can see the um, negative 165 from the impact on fund balance from the expenditures being a little bit higher than revenues, but we're ending on a positive um, fund balance of $8,600. The uh, I know there was a question last time about the fiscal year 21-22 column, and it's actually in our policy that we go ahead and, and include that. So I still have that in there. Um, it looks a little, it, well, not a little, it's a lot out of balance because right now we still are running our revenue projections based on the information we have. But on the expenditure side, we still are kind of showing that we're returning back to normal. So as we get more data and we can fine tune those numbers, it'll probably be after mid year for, for um, mid year of 2021 before we can really start fine tuning 21 22. But that we'll be able to close that gap once we start planning that budget. Jim, before you um, just start. as a reminder for what our assumptions were for on the revenue side, um, this is uh, yeah, this is unchanged from the previous meeting. So we have property tax going up by four percent, sales tax uh, decreasing twenty percent, TOT seventy percent, parking revenues by fifty percent, parking citations twenty, other revenues uh, down about five percent for a total decrease from the prior year of 22% or about 3.7 million. Um, and again, that's based on our comparison from what we're proposing in the budget tonight versus what our budget was last year. If you look at what we had planned to budget for this year, the, the decrease is actually about four and a half million dollars. Um, again, sales tax and TOT represent approximately 60% of our general fund revenues, sales tax being around 49% of that. Our top 25 sales tax generators represent about 63% of that um, total sales tax on the top five, 35%. So we'll be watching closely how those um, businesses, what, how they're allowed to reopen and how quickly they can get back to, to somewhat normalcy. And that'll, um, that'll impact us quite a bit on, on our revenues. Uh, sales tax revenue projections, we actually received the statement from the state yesterday on what our final payment will be for the first quarter of 2020, third quarter of our fiscal year, January through March 2020, and we're at 1.15 million. That's down about a little over 10% from what we received prior year at the same period, and just under 12% below what we had budgeted for this period. Um, right now, staff and HDL are analyzing that data. <clears throat> So what we got yesterday was just the statement to tell us the amount of money. We don't have any data to show how that money was generated. That'll take a couple of weeks before that's available from the state, and then probably a couple of more weeks for staff and HDL to go through it and kind of reconcile our, our projections and then see if we need to make any adjustments from there. So we're probably about three or four weeks out before we really have a real good handle on what that, what that data looks like. On the expenditure side, um, this is our forecast and changes from prior fiscal year. Personnel is at 8.5% or 840, so that's slightly different from what we saw at the first 
hearing, and that's due to that um, cleanup that we did. So that's, uh, I believe, $120,000 more of um, reductions on personnel. Contract services, slightly different, um, came down a little bit, I think 30000 somewhere along there. Um, training and memberships, supplies are the same as uh, last time at at just under 39% for training and memberships and supplies at a little over 12% decrease. Grants and subsidies, the percentage is still 100%, but since we're comparing to prior year, I had put in uh, 275,000. It was actually 269, 647. So I just cleaned that up to make it accurate. And then internal service funds and other financing uses are the same as from the first hearing at 22% for the ISFs and um, almost 84.5% for other financing uses, which again is primarily no transfers into our capital improvement program. Uh, I think this would be a good point to pause and see if we have any questions on any of those before I move on. And if not, I will move on. I had a question. Okay. Um, this is concerning the contingency fund transfer, and I, I saw the slide that says the transfer was being eliminated, um, which is, is reflected in most of the uh, charts. But um, I was a little um, confused about on the packet page 22, where it references the contingency reserve. Um, this amount to be uh, drawn down from the contingency reserve would be approximately 166,000, and that's reflected on also on page um, 24 of the packet, which shows the proposed um, 2021 contingency down at um, about um, one one million eight hundred ninety-five thousand, and then. Um, also on um, the agenda packet page 115, uh, which um, has uh, the contingency reserve uh, sources and uses, it also shows it going down by 160, about 166,000. Um, so I was unsure whether we're actually uh, are just using it for cash flow or if we're actually transferring that amount of money into the operating budget. So that, um, I started taking the, those transfers out and I just missed some of the links. So when you look at the balance of the reserve, it, I had it linked back to what our deficit was and just didn't clean it up. So I'll have that cleaned up before it comes back to council. But there, right now I don't have any transfers. There should not be any transfers. Okay. Okay. So that's just a, kind of a, a presentation um, uh, timing, um, and all those will be reflected that there will be no transfers out. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you, Jim. Any additional questions from council? All right. Okay, then I will continue on. Um, so at the, the first hearing, um, there was a couple of follow-up items that I want to touch on right now. The first is the um, early childhood and youth program funding, the restricted TOT revenue. Uh, I think we were talking about 16,000 at the first hearing. And when I went back to do the slide, we had uh, inadvertently, we were looking at the local business group portion of the restricted TOT that traditionally is split up between local business groups. And the actual TOT revenue for early childhood and youth programming is 15,000. So just wanted to kind of clear that up. And um, what we've done is suggest uh, percentages for different uh, expenditure categories, not specific to any problems to uh, or programs, not problems, sorry, to programs, just to allow um, the recreation supervisors some flexibility to direct that money where it's needed within whatever program it's needed in. But this kind of gives an idea of, of what staff was thinking as far as a breakdown of whatever that TOT revenue is. And we were using percentages just so we could, if it's 14,000, then we know what the percentage is, or if it's 20,000, we know what the percentage is. Um, but we have 30% going to supplies, 
15% to transportation, 15% to contracts, and 40% to scholarships. And I can pause if there's questions on that or go to the next slide, but, but that's really all I have on the early childhood and youth program funding going to recreation at this point. All right, any council members are invited to uh, click the raise hand button if they have any questions on this slide. Oh, I'm sorry, yes? Oh, well, I, I just want, you know, for some reason, I, I don't have those uh, icons available. Um, so if you, if you scroll to the bottom of the presentation, you should see where it says participant. I do, I see that. If you click on that, it'll pull up a toolbar, and it's at the very bottom of that, there's three buttons, invite, mute me, and raise hand. Oh, I see. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I see that Councilmember Bertrand has his hand raised. So I have a question on the earlier slides, Jim. Um, I was sort of mulling it over, but in the taxes that we received for January, February, March, with a 10% um, drop, um, would you think that's reflective of closed businesses or just a general decline in economic activity? What's your sense on that? Because to me, depending on how we view that, it either portends, portends, portends I can't pronounce it, gives us an idea of how bad the next three months are going to be. Sure. I think there was a general decline, and I just want to get your sense. Um, there was a little bit of a decline um, in, in the payments that were coming in for, you know, like we get three payments for sales tax and those first two look lower than what I was anticipating, but that's not really a good test because the state will true it up at the end. So the last payment we got was larger than I was expecting. So I really think that the drop, if you, if you recall, the shelter in place orders went into place in Santa Cruz County on March 16th. So we had a 90-day quarter. We had about 75 days of normal activity and then 15 days of completely shut down. And, and we had thought that that first quarter would drop by about 10 or 12 percent just based on the closed businesses. Okay, so maybe we did a little bit better than projected at the time. Possibly, yeah. Okay, thank you. Council Member Story, did you also have a comment that you wanted to make? Or a question, rather? Uh, no, Mayor. I, that was my question, and you answered it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I will move on to um, the next topic that we wanted to touch on was the um, availability, the CARES Act, and availability of CDBG grant funding. So there's going to be three rounds of, of CDBG grant funds, and this is the first of those three. And we believe there's a little bit more than a little over $195,000 available. That money can be utilized for responses to COVID-19 issues and must apply with match national objectives. So it has to hit all three of these, uh, benefit low-income households, prevent blight, and meet an urgent need. And it must be available to everyone. There can be no discrimination, and it can't go to like groups where there's a membership required. The proposed allocation to the allowed activities we have, uh, we're proposing 42% to public services, which includes food distribution and housing assistance, 21% to homeless housing facilities, and 21% to economic development or micro enterprise grants. Um, what that looks like from a funding perspective is from the housing facilities and homelessness, 21% would be about 40,000, almost 40,500. Um, and that's the CDBG CV request. We have a column there for community grants just showing what we gave to each of these areas through the community grant program, just kind of as a reference point. Um, for public services, which includes the food service and housing assistance, we have that at uh, proposing 42%, so that's 80925 And then on the economic development front, 21%, uh, or again, the same 40465 we also have $25,000 in our housing trust fund program for housing assistance, which is a special revenue fund. And before I move on, I'll pause and see if there's any questions on the CDBG or CARES Act. I see Vice Mayor Brooks has her hand up. 
Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, Jim, can you talk a little bit about um, the flexibility of the percentages that you're proposing here? And similarly to the previous slide, is that something that, is it, are those percentages flexible? Um, I'm going to actually defer to our community development director, Katie Herlihy, because she is, knows a lot more about this than I do. And good evening, Mayor and Council and Vice Mayor Brooks. Yes, that the money, how we have it allocated now, we put it at an even split. Um, there's three activities, but in one activity, there's both um, housing and food distribution. So we did 21, you know, um, an even split between the four. And in talking to HPD, the Housing and Community Development at the state level, we are able to, for the, um, for the purposes of adopting a resolution and making sure we're prepared to submit our application at the earliest availability, we have to have a resolution ready and um, we have to uh, lay out exactly how we're gonna break down those funds. But there's flexibility, so at the time of when um, between applying, at the time of applying, um, what's in the resolution, we can work with HCV to modify those numbers based on need. So they're not set in stone. We can work with HCV to modify those. Great, thank you. And Jim, on the previous slide, um, regarding the um, dedicated children's fund, I'm just kind of stepping back, and the same question applies to the percentages presented here. Is that something that would be flexible to the, if council were to agree on this transfer, um, is it flexible for the Parks and Rec Department? Yes, that's, that's completely um, council's discretion on how, how to split that money up. This was um, staff's recommendation, but yeah, there's definite flexibility there. Well, I guess, I'm, I'm sorry, let me be a little bit more clear. Um, because we don't know what the needs are precisely. I mean, this is just kind of a guess. So would, would Parks and Rec have the option to be more flexible? Let's say there was a higher need in scholarships and less need in supplies down the road. Um, could those, can the dollars be used in that way? Um, I, I, I think that we could just approve, and, and I'll wait for the city manager or city attorney to correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe we could approve or the council could approve the transfer of money, the uh, restricted TOT to recreation as 100%. And then if, um, if you wanna leave that flexibility, we could report back how it's spent as it's spent. Um, but then that would be council getting a report after the fact. And I don't know if that's, if that's what you're aiming for. Yeah, I guess I'm just uncertain regarding transportation at this point in time. Um, some of the programs are on a school site and that might not be what the future holds any longer. And so um, I don't want to hold it to them to, to use 15% if they can't. So I'm just, I'm just worried and, about that. And, and quite honestly, the dollars are so low, it's kind of within the city manager's discretion. He could adjust within those categories under our, our budget policy and then we could report back at that time. Oh, okay. Or, or we could take transportation out and reallocate that 15% and then if we have a need for transportation, we could always come back and request a budget amendment. But the dollars are so low, it's kinda. So I think that to answer the question, I think directly, the, am, I, am I muted or can people hear me? We can hear you. Okay. So I think um, the finance director is exactly correct, is, is that these dollar amounts would fall within my authority to move them around within the budget. Um, so if you're comfortable with that, we can allocate them like this, and then you could give me the okay to do that if the need is turns out to be somewhere else. Alternatively, we could appropriate some of this now, and as the need is sort of further fleshed out, we could get council's approval to make the expenditure. I think it's really up to council's discretion uh, about how how exactly this is done. I think the best way to think of this is these would be penciled in in these spots and then the need, like you said, would be determined down the road as we got further into the budget. And whether that became a council action to reappropriate it if necessary, or you wanted to um, give that authority as with other budget items to make the minor tweaks, 
um, staff could do it independently and we report back. Either way is fine. Thank you. That's all I have for now. Thank you. I see Council Member Bertrand also has his hand up. Yeah. Um, Excuse me, Vice Mayor Brooks, if you can lower your hand just so we can ensure that we're uh, perfect. perfect. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Council Member. Um, Jim, can you go back to the slide uh, detailing the grant? Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. So, you know, as Yvette brought up last meeting, you know, some of these items are going to help cover some of the amounts that we've given to community grants. And that's an important consideration for me because at this point we're not funding any community grants. Um, I'd like to know when would we know about this grant in terms of it's being granted? Basically, how soon would we be able to get the monies at our disposal? Sure, I'm going to defer again to, to Katie on that one. She's right. great on this. Okay, um, so <laughs> the original guidance had suggested that the um, notice of financial, the, the funding availability would be out this week. It has not been published yet. Um, and that applications will be shortly after that. So. Um, I'm thinking in the next couple of weeks, the application process should open up. Um, and I'm estimating that the fund would become available. We're trying to set everything up on, a, on the fastest timeline we can, but probably funds being available in probably as far out as 60 days, um, somewhere between, you know, we'll try to make it happen. If, if we could get it done in 45 days, I'm just not sure we're depending on money coming in from the state. So how quickly that will happen, I'm not sure, but we'll, I guarantee we'll get our application in as soon as possible, once we can. Okay, so we'll do our part. Thank you very much. Um, you know, as we move forward in trying to figure out how to deal with some of the other issues of our community, um, this is gonna help quite a bit. So thank you for putting this grant together. You're welcome. All right, Council Member Bertrand, if you could lower your hand, I think it's the same button that you used to raise it. Uh, yep. And we will move along. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, so the next item I wanted to touch on was, we've talked about the measure F up and I don't know if that makes a lot of sense to everybody, but um, I just wanted to show the how measure F has, what the revenues have come in and, and how it's been spent since it went into um, effect on January 1st of 2018. So the top line, uh, I have each fiscal year broken down in the columns there, but the top line is revenue, the top line is numbers. So you can see we budgeted 550 in that first year. We transferred 550 to the general fund, but we only received 486. So really that, um, and we budgeted the 550. So in, in what we should, have, should be doing each year is making that match up. So we should have lowered that, um, the budgeted amount to match the 486. And the same is true in last year, fiscal year 18, 19. We were a little closer last year, but again, it was still a little, about what, 25, $30,000 short there, um, 25. And then this year, uh, we've received the first three quarters. We still have a quarter to go um, based on what I was told we were going to receive for the first quarter of this year, I expect that number to be somewhere to end somewhere around the 800 or 850 mark. And then that aggregate would be um, probably somewhere in the three to 350 range. And that's what we would reduce our transfer by just to true everything up. And then I would work with the public works director to adjust the budgets to match up to what we actually, actually have in funding. So just kind of as a summary, we've budgeted, since it went into place, we've budgeted a little over 2.7 million in revenues, and to date we've received just under 2.3. Again, we probably have somewhere in the 80 to $100,000 will probably come in in this last quarter. I'm hoping that it's not any lower than that. Um, as far as the expenditure side, we've budgeted everything um, to the projects that are listed, listed over there on the far left, the Wharf, Jetty, Flume, uh, 2017 Wharf Repairs, Beach loader, this uh, measure I've paid for a little over 50% of that. The Grand Avenue path repairs and then the 2020 wharf repairs. 
And that number, the 200,000, is still an estimate. Uh, we're awaiting final costs on that one. Um, and out of the 2.7 that we've budgeted, we've actually spent a little over 800,000. So we do have almost 1.5 in revenues above what we've expended, but all of that money is really programmed to the work jetty and clean projects at this time. So I know Jim said this, but it's a, it's a little bit of a funny concept to get, you know, get your head around. But basically the upshot here is, is that we budget a certain amount of Measure F funding and we've been transferring that amount, the amount that we budgeted into the CIP. And so if the actual receipts have come in less, we've actually been using other general fund dollars and then calling it Measure F. So that's when we talk about the Measure F true up. It's to match the actual CIP transfers to what we received in Measure F. I hope that, that makes sense. Okay, I'll go ahead and move on. I think, yeah, we have uh, two slides on our CIP status update. So um, this one, the, uh, fairly self-explanatory. We have the, the projects listed on the left. Funding sources are across the top, general fund, measure F, other, what um, we've appropriated uh, or encumbered, what we've uh, expensed, and what our fund balance is as of right now and what our estimated construction cost is. So on the estimated construction cost, if the number is green and the project's fully funded, if it's in red, then it's not fully funded yet. Um, and I can pause here for a second if we have any questions. Um, let you kind of look at the projects for a second and see. Hey, Council Member Story has his hand raised. Yeah, and actually my question is concerning the Measure F true up. Um, on the previous slide, it looks like the total delta was 445000 uh, but we only transferred or adjusted uh, the fund balance by 300000 uh, What's that difference? The difference is what I'm estimating for, to come in for the fourth quarter. Uh, we just received, it was 167000 for the first quarter. Uh, I think it'll be half of that. So uh, before I had yesterday's number, I was estimating that that delta would be about 300,000. I think it's going to be closer to 350. And then once we know what that number is, then I'll, I'll do that. The, the, the true up will be what the actual difference is. This is just kind of an estimate at this point based on what we have today. So that, that will be a moving target as we move forward. Correct. And I, I, I won't even know, uh, we won't know what that actual number is until August 20th. Yeah, okay. Thank you. No, November. Oh, no, that's right. August 20th. And Vice Mayor Brooks has her hand raised now. Vice Mayor Brooks. Thank you. Um, just for clarification. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, sorry. Um, for a clarification regarding the CIP status update. So these, um, this is for 2021, and these are projects that were already approved and budgeted in to our packet. Is that correct? These are projects that have been approved in prior years that are already um, funded to some extent. And then, um, like Clare Street Pedestrian Crossing was approved last year. We have $150,000 of general fund money going in and 120 of other funds but it's not coming out of the 2021. These are just an update of projects that are already funded. And are they funded to completion? So meaning if we continue to um, to no longer fund, so we have like CIP projects on hold, are these on hold or I just need, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. Sure, I think, um, I think I'm gonna defer to Steve and let him kind of walk through this. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So, the, can you hear me, first of all? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the status on the, on the right for each project, on hold means we're waiting for information from, in the case of the Monterey Park Railroad Station pathway from the Regional Transportation Commission. Uh, Riston Park is on hold. We're, we're kind of 
not actively uh, moving forward with that project because we're waiting for the Prop 68 um, state park grants to be released. Um, so on hold means we're, we're waiting for action from other agencies. In design means we're actively working on a design or in case of the under, utility undergrounding, pg and is working on that. Does that answer your question? Sort of. And then the status is kind of like where we are today of all projects being on hold, meaning that we're no, not going to be spend, spending any additional dollars. Is that reflected here? Or are we anticipating these costs? So the expenses to date column shows what we spent today. Um, at this point, uh, we would not expend any additional funding for putting a project out to bid or completing construction without coming to the council and getting further direction. So for the, for example, except for the library project, which is ongoing, for example, the Capitola Avenue sidewalk and retaining wall, the second project from the bottom, um, we don't have an estimated construction cost there because there's some phasing we could do. It is in design. That is completely general fund, um, funded by general fund money. So we would not proceed with that at this point without coming back to council. Okay, thank you. I see council member Bertrand also has his hand up. Do you have a question, council member Bertrand? I do. That's why I put my hand up. But um, I put it up so long ago, I was thinking, oh, should I back off in the question or not? Because it's a touchy one. Um, in terms of the uh, library, there's a delta here of about 800000 We have an existing fund balance, uh, about 800000 over the estimated cost. Now, I know things are changing on the cost. Um, is there any projection there? Could we recover that 800000 at some point um, or maybe less? Is it, what's the uh, thoughts on this? So the cost for the library show the actual known costs or anticipated contracts that have been let. They do not at this point include any costs for uh, relocation of the high voltage lines of the library or delay costs from the contractor. Um, we just were I'm uncomfortable forecasting those, we do anticipate we'll have sufficient funding, but uh, that fund balance will go toward those costs. Okay. Do you think we'll get anything back into the general fund at this point, or do you want to hold on that uh, comment? I'm hopeful. Um, to be honest, I think there'll be some, but um, until I see what PG&E's costs are going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to commit to anything. Okay, so timelines have changed in my mind. Uh, what is our estimated time of ribbon cutting? Ribbon cutting will be um, this fall. Uh, we anticipate continuing construction uh, this summer, and then uh, it's possible that the contractor will pause while we're waiting for PG&E to um, deal with the power lines. Um, that's what we're looking at right now. Okay, thank you, Steve. All right. Any additional questions? I think we can move on. Okay, we'll move on. I have one more slide on uh, CIP status. So again, same thing. Projects are listed, listed on the left. Funding sources across the top. Um, on this page, you'll you'll notice that all of the other than the work improvements, all of the projects are fully funded. Um, Park Avenue sidewalk, which had 250,000 of general fund, is completed. So, and then uh, Park Avenue storm damage. I guess we have 100,000 of general fund money. Um, that may have already been spent, I'm not. It has already been spent. That was part of the design cost. Yeah, it's been spent, but we may get partial reimbursement from the SHWA on that as we complete the project. So every, everything listed on this page, with the exception of um, on pavement, pavement management, Oh, that just we just go by what we have as funding with the exception of the wharf it is funded and there is no more additional general fund cost to any of these projects at this point point. and if i could quickly add something about the pavement management the last row there so the 443 represents the measure d and sb1 funding that's available this year we had not allocated that funding um as you know it's all for transportation projects so as we kind of get through this 
period of time, we will come forward with some options for the project and uh, discuss those with the city council. So at this point, it's money we anticipate coming in. Obviously, they're both, uh, or at least Measure D is a sales tax initiative. We've reduced it by $50,000. Really no idea what that, if that's accurate or not. SB1 is, a, is gas and sales tax. So both of those are kind of in flux, but that would be our standard allocation on the 443. And like it says, we have not allocated that toward a specific project yet. I see, uh, let's see, was that council member story? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, Steve, um, the differences in, uh, between the existing fund balance uh, on this uh, spreadsheet that's uh, posted currently um, and the estimated cost, uh, they're all green, um, which means we're overfunded. Um, are, are the uh, balances eligible to go back into the general fund? So, for yes, for the Measure F projects, um, the Flume and the Jetty, so those are all completely Measure F. There is a fund balance. If we proceed with construction, we estimate there will be, um, you know, the difference between those, the second to last and third to last columns. Uh, would be a fund balance. Uh, we do not know the firm construction costs yet. Um, obviously, we haven't bid that project. So, right. that would be something to determine. Yeah. yeah, understood. That you just asked them. Right. Yeah, uh, so they would be returnable to the general fund. Right, right. Thank you. Councilmember Bertrand, I see you have your hand up. Is that a new question or was that from the last question? Oh, no, I read. I put it down from the last time, and now I put it up again because I have another question for Steve. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned that um, you know some of the revenues. You mentioned fifty thousand less, you know, for the road man uh, pavement management. Um, sometimes in the past, you've I think aggregated funds and then did a big push on a project. Um, in terms of your money sources, is that something you could do this time so you could get better deals or would they expire? Because your sources, I'm not always sure about. Some are grants, and I don't know if you have to do it right away, that kind of thing. So we, in, for the last two previous fiscal years, we have aggregated both our SB1 money and our Measure D money. Um, to our benefit, they have both now been expended for the, cap, for the Park Avenue sidewalk project, which was just completed, and the Bromer Street project, which is just beginning construction. So we're kind of uh, all caught up with my aggregation of project money, and that 443 uh, in the spreadsheet here represents the new money that we anticipate in 2021, and that is something we could carry forward should so we desire and put it together with future monies. Thank you. All right. Uh, seeing no additional questions from council members. Um, so in terms of next steps, um, I've just listed the, the meetings that we have between now and uh, June 30th. Yeah. We have uh, two, two more budget hearings scheduled if, if we need to do those, one on June 3rd and the other one on June 18th. Uh, we've also moved the um, regular fact meeting that was scheduled for June 16th up to June 9th, just so I can update the fact on what progress we have made and then I have the regular city council meetings with the target of adopting the budget, uh, the 20, fiscal year 2021 budget on June 25th. Um, so recommendations for this evening is to receive the fiscal year 2021 proposed budget presentation, um, identify any budget questions that we need to follow up on, and provide staff direction on the proposed budget, and then if so desired, continue the budget deliberations to June 3rd. And that's the end of my presentation, and I'd be happy to take any additional questions. All right, if there's any additional questions from the council uh, at this time, go ahead and raise your hand. I'm gonna stop, there we go. All right, seeing no additional questions from council members, we will bring this to public comment. 
So we have a couple different uh, ways to do public comment tonight. So let's start with uh, Mr. City Manager. Are there any emailed public comments? Yes, it looks like we have one. Um, I will share my screen and then we will listen to the comment. Can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, it looks like we don't have audio. Yeah, we don't hear it though. Yeah. Well, I think I hear it, but it's quite quiet. Why don't I just read it just in the effort uh, and just keep this process moving? So this is an email from looks like from David Bianca. I'm requesting you. I'm requesting you reconsider your cuts to services to your residents through community programs, essential partner in good times and first responders in times of crisis for food, shelter, clothing, medical care, child care, dental care, support services and mental health services. Your children, families and seniors depend on us. They consider our services necessary and not a luxury. I ask that we share the financial pain as a true partner and not be completely defunded and discarded. We have not and will never disregard the needs of your residents. David um, Bianchi. That's the only comment we received here. Great, thank you. Um, and Mr. Moderator, Larry, uh, are there any verbal public comments? Uh, anyone in our Zoom, any one of our Zoom attendees that have raised their hands? Yes, Madam comments? Mayor, I'm going, I'm going to unmute the, the, we have one person at this point. Okay, and they'll have uh, three minutes to speak, correct? That's correct. Great, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. My name is Leah Samuels and I'm the Executive Director of the Human Care Alliance. I'm new to this agency and it's unfortunate that I'm introducing myself to you today under these circumstances, but I'm happy to be here. I wanted to first thank you for your long history supporting nonprofits it's not just the money, sometimes it's a small percentage for larger organizations, but it is a symbol of your dedication to these agencies, and I thank you for that. Um, unfortunately, uh, I see that you've cut that funding moving forward. I know and understand, as I think we all do, that you have some very difficult decisions to make. I can see you're taking that seriously today. And I'm asking that you consider a few things before you make your final budget decisions. The message that you're going to send with this budget will speak to the priorities that you hold for your city. I'm asking that you take into consideration that there is federal funding that is tied to the funding that the city gives, it's matching funds. So by completely cutting your funding, you could be decreasing revenue to your city through these agencies. I would also ask that you consider what services will be most used over the next year what areas could have reduced utility in the likely reality of continued social distancing and probably another shelter in place in the winter? Is this really the time to cut these essential services and workers? During my time as an attorney for public interest services with children and adults as my clients in both the dependency and criminal justice system, I have served some of your constituents and these children's families do rely on these services. I know that you know that. I know that you care about your constituents and you're trying to make the best decisions that you can. I do believe that you can send a message by keeping these nonprofits in your budget in some capacity that you still hold them as valuable partners, that they are still essential. It would be quite meaningful and helpful to us to remain a notable figure in your budget. And I thank you for your time. I look forward to meeting you all under other circumstances and working with you in the future. Thank you for your comments. I do, do not see any other hands raised. Okay. All right, uh, with that, we will bring it back to the council for for additional comments and deliberation. Uh, let's start with uh, Council Member Story. Any additional comments? 
No, Mayor, no additional comments. Thank you. Vice Mayor Brooks? I have no comments, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Bosworth? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so I was listening to the questions brought up by the council members, and I didn't hear a lot of direction requested to come back for a teacher uh, meeting. So my concern is, uh, is there anything else that we're waiting for that's prohibiting us from adopting this budget? Maybe we could get staff to answer that for us. From staff's perspective, you know, we prepared the budget, and so it's it's ready for adoption. Obviously, there's a couple of corrections to the contingency that the finance director noted. Um, but if we got the direction tonight to come back, uh, we would be we can come back with uh, the package to adopt a budget at your next regular regularly scheduled meeting. So you. Well, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to adopt the budget. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Mayor Peterson, if um, if this would be a good time to just add, if um, if we need it or if we needed to add the the language that our city manager has the discretion to amend the dedicated children's fund um, in the rest department. I think that's already part of our, I, I can't remember if it was a former resolution or if it's just a city um, rule or something, but I'm pretty sure that if under a certain amount of money, our city manager has the authority to make adjustments on his own. Do we need, but do we need to include that in this uh, resolution? That's a good question. So technically, no, you don't. We do, you know, there is a certain budget threshold that I can adjust the budget within. Um, actually, department heads can make certain levels of adjustments on their own. I can make others and then other ones we have to come to the city council. Frankly, this has been a funding source that has received so much attention that if the council was specifically putting it somewhere, I would certainly be loath to move it without communicating with the council. However, if your direction is understanding that this is a placeholder and that they could be adjusted as necessary uh, under the existing rules and policies that the city has, that would be good direction and we would for us to know. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see Council Member Bertrand and Council Member Bator both have their hands up. So let's start with Council Member Bertrand. I'm sorry, look, before we do that, we have a motion on the floor. So do we have a second before we move forward with further discussion? Okay, so hearing none, the motion dies for lack of a second. Let's continue our conversation. Council Member Bertrand. Council Member Bertrand, you're muted. Swan. Oh, there it is. There you go. Swan, sorry. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so some of the questions I answered were basically in realization that there are expenditures that we have budgeted that may, depending on how circumstances are, come back to the general fund for us to consider how we would use those monies that the city of Capitol has at its disposal. And you know, I, I took note in Jim's presentation, and it was a stark reminder of the reality of our situation that, you know, we're to spend money on things that are absolutely necessary for the carrying out of the duties to the Capitola to its citizens. And I, I took that to heart. But I'm realizing that we also have a committee, a commitment to other parts of this community in different ways that aren't necessarily the required statute requirements that we've had. And because we've given money to other agencies in the past, they're dependent on us. And to have an abrupt cancellation of that support is, is very dramatic. It's not something that's been broadcast, not something that any agency that has depended on us was expecting. But it's true that no one was expecting this pandemic. So I'd like to make a motion that we pass the budget, approve the budget, but that we start our discussion of how we're going to support our community grants program, a program that we haven't actually 
continued that discussion with the idea that there might be monies in the future because of how our budget carries out that we can actually allocate. So that's my motion. Councilmember Bertrand, can I ask for clarification on your motion? Correct. Are you um, suggesting that we, we review the community grants moving forward uh, after we've already approved the budget, or are you suggesting that we review them at the mid-year budget review? Um, I would like it to be agendized so that we actually start that process. I think the budget is fine the way it is with some of the comments that I just made, but I think we do have a commitment to broadcast to our agencies in the past that have depended on us what we have planned, what we are going to plan. If we are going to plan anything, we need to make those decisions, and we haven't. We've put it off. But that's part of the process. We've had things to deal with. So I want the budget approved. I agree with that. But I want a commitment from us that we actually move that process forward of how we're going to look at our community grant program. There may or may not be monies available. If we don't have that process moving forward, we may not be able to take care of them. And I agree with Brooks's comment last time that you know some of the grants that may come through is going to cover some of those programs, which is great, but we don't know that yet. High probability, my hat's off to Katie and her department for putting that forward. But I'd like to let the community know that we haven't abandoned them. We started a process, uh, you know, Madam Mayor, you were on that committee and Ed was on that committee too. I would like to see that process move forward. I don't want to abandon the community and I don't want to basically shirk our responsibility because a year ago we said we we're going to have this process. So that's basically, I, I want a commitment from the board that we actually move forward on this process and I do want to see the budget move forward. I agree with Jim. You know, Jamie has to keep a balanced budget. He's doing his best. I support the staff in making that effort. No problem there. But we also have other responsibilities to, responsibilities to the community in general. Thank you. Thank you for those comments, Council Member Bertrand. Uh, so we do have a motion on the floor. Council Member ba uh, Bottorf, do you have comments? I have comments, so I was going to wait and so you see if you had a second. Okay, so we do have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? All right, hearing none, motion dies for lack of a second. Let's continue our conversation. We'll move on to Council Member Bosworth. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, well, I'm glad there's at least uh, some uh, agreement on, on, on dealing with the budget. And so to uh, Council Member Bertrand's comments about community grants, this, this is not an issue about community grants, and it's not an issue about so many other things that we're cutting that are vital to the city. I think the list goes on and on. <clears throat> Almost $2 million worth of contracts and, and what we would call as uncommitted obligations that we have to uh, uh, evaluate. At this point, I, I, I don't have a problem looking back at anything if this moves forward and it turns out that we start showing increases in revenue. My fear is that I think that our finance director is trying to give us the best shot of what he anticipates revenue, but this could actually be worse. So for us to think about now about trying to how we're going to spend money, I've got comfortable with the fact that almost everything we know has to be put on hold because we just don't have the revenue to make these kinds of commitments. We're just trying to hold on to our workforce. Uh, we're trying to keep the lights on. And, and I think anything other than that, uh, it, it, there, there are so many warranted programs, and, and you know, I, I'm hopeful that somehow through uh, the, the CDBG grant, that maybe that money can be used to fund meals on wheels. I don't even know things like this, but I'm, I know that I have great confidence in the mayor and the vice mayor that any money out of that CDBG fund that can be allocated to any group that's, that's eligible, it will happen. But right now, I'm just trying to pass a budget to get us moving forward and start thinking about you know, what we need to do and plan for that. And let's just hope that uh, the, the numbers come in even 1% better than what we're forecasting. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bottor. If I see Vice Mayor Brooks has her hand up. Yeah, thank you. Well, it sounds like Council Member Bertrand and Council Member Bottor are actually in agreement on the motion that was previously made. It sounds like um, we would be okay with moving that forward. I just have a clarify or a question. Um, my, you, uh, Mayor Peterson, you mentioned the 
was it a revise or a time when we come back to discuss this budget? So should there be monies that open up or should there be a change in the budget or everything looks better per se? Um, would we then be able to re, obviously we would be, be ready to reevaluate whatever we could at that point. Is that correct, the manager? Yeah, so I mean, I think we talked about this a little bit in our last budget hearing, and maybe I'll just reiterate that point, is, is that normally we do the one mid-year budget adjustment and budget check-in. I think this year we're going to need to do it more frequently. And so we, we talked about the challenges with forecasting the revenue because, you know, it's hard to it, – there's so many different factors that go into this. So I think it makes a ton of sense to say, look, this is our budget at this point. It's our first flag in the sand but we're gonna come back each quarter and talk about where we see it playing out. Thank you, and I would just echo what um, Council Member Bertrand was saying is that absolutely our community grant recipients are our priority, our constituents are our priority, um, and it, they definitely will continue to be so um, throughout the year when we hear these updates. So um, I'm gonna revisit that motion, Council Member, um, uh, Botsworth and just say that if we can hold, I, I guess we don't need our next money and I would motion just to carry on to our June uh, meeting to approve this budget as presented today. If that's a motion to just approve the budget, I, I'll second it. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second and we'll continue for discussion because I see there's still some hands up. Um, before we move up further with additional comment, I, I would just like to, to throw in a comment also. Um, I agree with what's been said about the importance of the community grant program and the need to continue to evaluate what our options are as we move forward while also setting, uh, approving a budget that, that looks um, most appropriate and necessary for the time we're in right now. Um, you know, as we move forward, if circumstances change, of course, we consider, um, you know, funding what we can fund. I know there's been um, questions from constituents about things like closing the creek, and, and that's another thing that, you know, my understanding is that a large majority of the funding required to close the creek is because of the monitoring uh, once, we've, once we've closed it up. And so my question was, can we get a waiver so that we don't have to do that monitoring and don't have to pay that fee and can potentially open the creek? But we don't have those answers right now. Um, like uh, much like we don't have the answers of what our financial situation might look like in the next three months or six months. And so I think it's important that we do keep an open mind that as we move forward, um, there may be opportunities for us to fund things that where we stand right now um, don't look realistic. So I, I would like us to remain as hopeful as possible that things will, the, the sun will shine on us again in the future. Uh, with that being said, I see the council member Story uh, has his hand raised, and then I think uh, council member Bertrand as well. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm a little unclear about the motion. I heard June a put budget approval, um, but then it sounded like Councilman uh, Borsov seconded approving um, the budget tonight, right now. Um, I'm not one. To me, it seems that there's still outstanding items, um, and I'm not sure what the rush is to approve this budget. We heard that um, Jim had not uh, finalized the true up figure for the major F uh, tax revenues, uh, which is a, could be a significant uh, difference uh, between what we currently have budgeted. Um, the details about the CDBG. Uh, is still outstanding. I heard Katie said that it would be a couple of weeks um, before we get more detail about that. Um, and there's also still some internal discussions going on uh, that will affect this budget. Um, so it seems to me that we should have all the information that um, the best information um, available to us before entering into um, a budget document, um, and for that, um, if the motion is to approve the budget tonight, um, I can't support it. Thank you. Councilmember Story, are you making a substitute motion, or are you just um, commenting on on your feelings on the current motion? Well, I um, I don't think it would necessitate a substitute motion because the um, uh, recommended action was to, to accept this report. Um, and so 
I, I assume the substitute motion would be to accept the report um, and move this to our next um, either uh, budget session, uh, if we have one scheduled, or the next regularly scheduled council meeting. Um, but I think we just have to see where this motion goes. Okay, let's let's start with that. Um, we have clarification. I'm sorry. May I offer some clarification oh. on my question? Yes, please. Council member story. Um, I if we went back to Jim's slides, I was thinking that we would not have our next meeting and that we our next scheduled uh, budget session and bring this to council in whatever our next council meeting was or is in June. I, you have a slide, Jim, on that with those dates. And that would allow for more time uh, to see what rolls out. So those were my thoughts and that's why I made that motion. I, I think so you're suggesting, I'm sorry, continue. Uh, June 11 was our council meeting then. So I'm guessing that would give enough time to explore all those things mentioned um, by council member story. Sure. The, the one thing we do need to make clear is, is that the measure of true up is really an iterative process. Um, we won't be getting a final payment until August, which is obviously much after the, the, the uh, budget's complete. So I think realistically what we need to be doing going forward is every year there's sort of a measure of true up that we do comparing the budgeted amount to what actually comes in. So I think Jim's point there about that was that he had put a placeholder in of $300,000 uh, and there probably is further truing up to do down the road. In terms of CDBG, uh, Katie, maybe you can help us with when we think we might be hearing more about CDBG. So CDBG we would be putting out an announcement for nonprofits to apply for the money and it would be, um, we, we would in the coming weeks we'll be deciding on what that process is, but it won't affect the budget itself. It'll depend on what applications come in and we'll go through a selection process in order to allocate those CDBG funds. So it'll, it'll depend on who applies and who is selected. May I ask some follow-up questions? Yes, of course. Um, well, one, first concerning the, concerning the true up, um, I'm not, you know, on the chart that I saw um, that was presented that the difference in the measure F uh, was $445,000, and we're only applying $300,000. And I'm not, yeah, we, if we don't know till August, then I'm not sure why we're projecting $445,000. Um, I just think it's worth taking some extra time to look at that, um, because there, there are other budget needs um, that may come up that we may be able to accomplish uh, with that gap. Um, but so I'm unclear about that difference of $145,000. And also in the CDBG, I thought there were some outstanding questions about how much we would actually get um, as a city. Um, and, and so, and I never heard that it's been affirmed that we're going to get any particular set amount. Um, so that's why I referenced those items. Um, but again, if, if, uh, Councilwoman Brooks is talking about, you know, taking us to the June regular meeting. Well, I'm fine with that. Let's take it to the June regular meeting. Um, but it sounds like the motion is to approve the budget tonight, and that's the part that I can't accept. I still think there's just some outstanding questions, and it would seem like it's worthwhile to hear all the updates um, on that. Uh, before we, you know, stamp this, um, uh, these commitments as being finalized. Um, so, so those are my responses to those two comments that were made. Thank you, Council Member Story. Uh, Council Member Bator has had his hand up for a while now. Yeah, I just want to clarify my second because that I think that's what started this rolling. And what I thought that I, I got from Council, not the Vice Mayor of Brooks, and maybe I misinterpreted this, was 
is that we were just making a recommendation tonight to approve what's back presented and bring it to the next council meeting for approval. I interpreted that as the meeting of May 28th, not of in June. And the only reason I was going to give the time to May 28th is because I think Jim said he wanted some time to do some corrections and uh, to, to, to show those funds, especially the ones that council member story was concerned about with the, with the, the Delta uh, on the war fund. And I think that uh, uh, finance director conveyed that that was a mathematical thing that he was going to correct and true up so that those numbers would be exact. But with reference to the recreation funds and the CBD funds, those aren't going to impact us and what we're going to do in approving the budget. Those are just extra funds that we're going to have. And we're talking about just an allocation point. And whatever that fund that we get, you know, the, the more we get from CBDG and, and, and the recreation money, you know, that's money that we're willing to spend into the public and into the, the group that absolutely need that money. But I didn't hear any questions other than the truing up of the numbers and with the, specifically the war fund, what, why we couldn't approve the budget. And that's why when the motion that I seconded, which may not be what the intent of Vice Mayor Brooks was, I thought it was the next meeting, which on my calendar I wrote down May 28th. So if we need to start over, then we need to start over. Thank you. To, to, just to be clear, well, um, we do need to adopt the budget by resolution, and you don't have the resolution prepared in front of you this evening. So staff will have to come back for another hearing. And I think that really the question on the table, maybe to simplify it a little bit, is when. Um, I will tell you that I don't believe we can get the resolution and the material together to put it out tomorrow to get it on May 28th. So I think realistically the option is, do we go to another budget hearing or do we go to June 11th? If that simplifies things a little bit. And on June 11th, if there's more conversation or changes to be made, we can make those changes at that meeting, correct? Correct. Yeah, so my motion stands that I'd like to push this out all the, uh, to our meeting in June. Um, and so, yeah, my motion. I'm going to leave, keep my motion on the table. Are you still the city manager's comment? I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We still have some uh, council members with their hands up. I think Council Member Bertrand's been waiting for a while, and then we're going to go to you, Council Member Story. You know, I, I'm going to bring up later um, that we actually start the process again to look at community grants. Um, I didn't want to put the budget in hijack or anything like that. But I did want to point out that this is something that we've been doing for, I don't know, 30 years, 40 years. I don't know how long we've been doing community grants. And the agencies in this county have um, depended on them. And um, I think we should uh, continue that process, but start the planning. I don't know what's going to happen with our budget. I agree with Ed. There's a definite possibility that it might even be worse off. You know, in which case, you know, we won't have anything, but we don't know that. And a lot of things were identified in this discussion this evening that tells me some things could come back to the general fund. For instance, the library, that's 800000 potentially. Who knows? Probably less, <laughs> maybe 500000 But these are things that are we prepared to deal with? And I think the community grants program is something that is our responsibility to start or restart, rather, our planning process. So I would like to uh, support the motion that uh, the vice mayor has done, but I also want to remind the city council that I think we should move forward on the planning process that we initiated at least a year ago. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I can jump in and council, council member story, I'm going to come to you right immediately uh, after. I just wanted to, to clarify some things. So if, if I understand what you're referring to, uh, council member Bertrand, was a couple years ago, uh, council member Bottorp and I um, had a, a kind of ad hoc committee to look at our community grant program. Since then, we had hired the consultants to review and determine what our priority, you know, how we wanted to uh, determine our priorities in our community grant funding, how we could ensure that our community grant funding was equitable. So you're referring to that process that we've been involved in already. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, so there was the initial committee of you and Ed, but the restart was with the contract that we put out and the hearings that we had on that which Absolutely. I thought was a very good direction, and I appreciate Absolutely. that direction. So if I can uh, offer a recommendation, uh, what I would suggest is that we can, you know, knowing that we're going to need to wait, uh, you know, a couple months and weather this storm to see what our finances are going to look like, if, if it's going to be better or worse than we thought it was, 
you know, I would be happy to, to um, continue with the process of considering what our priorities are as a city once we have funding available that we can give out, um, continuing to consider how do we uh, equitably, uh, how do we have equity in the distribution of these funds. Those are questions that I think that the council can consider um, in our normal council meetings as we move forward until we get to that um, next budget review. And at that point, we can take the principles that we've considered uh, and continue to discuss and use them to decide if we have money, how we can how we can distribute it. Would that be? Um, You're totally in agreement with what I'm, I'm trying to get across. Okay. I'd like to put out also, this is a chance that you guys are going to ding me on the street when you see me. I am going to say no funding for CAP. Duly noted. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Council Member Story. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to get clarification what I said. Um, Council Member Brooks's motion, implicit in her motion to take this discussion to the next or to the regular council meeting of June 11th is that the budget session scheduled for June 3rd is to be canceled. That's, that's how staff would interpret that motion, yes. I just wanted to get that clarification. Is that, is that what you meant, Yvette? Yeah, I, I'm just trying to buy us some more time. So I'm yeah. thinking thought if we can push it out till the, our June meeting and if there's any updates and changes and things that roll out, that I think that buys us the most time. And then if I believe there could be a follow-up meeting after the June 11th meeting according to that list Jim showed us. So, yeah. Okay, so we would cancel the June 3rd um, budget session um, and just bring it to the June 11th meeting. Okay, got it. Thank you. And just because I, I don't want to derail the conversation, I'll be very quick, just because we've talked a little bit about the, the community grant process. Uh, staff knows that we got an assignment um, to do some work and then come back to the council. We frankly put that process a little bit on hold as we shifted to these other types of meeting formats to try to focus on the sort of the near term issues. But there are a number of outstanding items. That's one. I know also the council conduct um, policy that got put on hold as well. So we can come back and revisit those things. All right, Council Member Story, I see your hand is still up. Is that because you have additional comments or? No, excuse me, I just failed to lower it. No problem. All right, if there's no additional comments, we have a motion and a second. Can I ask our uh, city clerk to uh, clarify the motion that she has on, on record? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so what I have mm, is that the council is approving the budget as presented to then go to the regular council meeting of June 11th for official adoption based on a resolution. And if we need further discussion at that time, that can take place. So I'm seeing no. Yeah, I see some head shaking. Can, um, uh, can Vice Mayor Brooks, can you clarify your motion? Yes. Yeah. So Jim, can you pull up that slide again? You're asking for the slide with the dates, right? Yeah. Okay. So my motion is to uh, to carry or to move forward with our budget, uh, to our budget with staff recommendation or the staff report to bring it back to June 11th for further council deliberation. So your motion is rather than to have a, an additional budget hearing to just bring the budget back to our normal council meeting, correct? Correct. Okay. I think it's clear. Was that the understanding? I'm sorry, go ahead. Clarification, Sta staff would need to know whether or not we're, we're supposed to be bringing the resolutions for adoption to that meeting? Yeah, that would be my second if you're bringing the resolution to the 11th meeting. Yeah, the, I, I, would, I would anticipate you would be prepared with that, but it, in light of all the changes and things going on right now, it also buys us time and something might happen from 
now till then that could substantially change that resolution. So absolutely be prepared with the resolution on June 11th, um, but council can deliberate even further and it can bring it back on June 18th if necessary as stated here in the next step. So the motion is to bring back the resolution on June 11th to a regular city council meeting. And I second that motion. Okay. I would also recommend once you've disposed of this motion, but um, probably a motion to cancel the June 3rd budget hearing as well. And to I, would, I would be okay with that friendly amendment if uh, Vice Mayor Brooks wanted to make that. Yes. I'll, I'll accept that friendly mm -hmm. amendment to cancel the, the June 3rd budget hearing meeting. And the SAC meeting too? No. Yeah, the fact will still meet. Okay. All right. I see no hands up. Can we just for clarification, um, uh, can our city clerk please uh, read back the motion? Yes. So we are canceling the June 3rd budget hearing, bringing back the budget to the regular meeting on June 11th with a resolution of adoption prepared but able to be changed and further discussed at the special meeting scheduled on June 18th. Is that the motion as, as understood? I see a nod from Vice Mayor Brooks. Council Member Bottorf, is that your understanding? Well, I don't know what the 18th is because if we end up adopting it on the 11th, there's no need for the 18th. I don't know if that needs to be in the motion because we'll, so that meeting would automatically be canceled if we adopt on the 11th. So if I'm understanding correctly, if I'm understanding correctly, the, the motion that I'm hearing is to cancel the budget hearing scheduled for June 3rd, bring the budget back to the council on June 11th with a resolution for approval, and the council will decide at that time if they're ready to approve or if they want to continue deliberation moving forward. Is that my, is that the correct understanding of the motion? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do we need anyone, do, do we need the person that made the motion or the person that seconded or the city clerk, do we need anyone to read that back? Staff is clear. Staff is clear, okay. All right, uh, seeing no additional comments, uh, can we have a roll call vote please? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. Aye. Council Member Bottorp. Aye. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. And Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, with that, we've come to the end of tonight's agenda. Uh, thank you all so much for your public comment and participation. Thank you to the council members and all the staff who have put tonight's meeting together. Uh, we will continue to discuss the budget at our uh, upcoming normally scheduled council mem uh, meeting on June 11th. Uh, with that, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a good night. Bye-bye.